Yo ho ho, hey my hearties, it's Rhonda Birchmore here. Yes, I've gone quite mad and welcome back though to Rhonda's Rewind, the series where I share with you some of my favourite career performances, secrets and stories right here on YouTube. Well, it has to be the most requested rewind so far. So on this week's episode, we are going way back to 1982 to that cult camp classic. I am talking about the pirate movie, Whoa, which featured little old me. The year was 1981 and I lined up an audition for the pirate movie. Australian actor, singer Ted Hamilton would team up with recording executive David Joseph in 1981 after they had seen Linda Ronstadt on Broadway in the Gilbert and Sullivan production of The Pirates of Penzance. And they decided, my goodness, then and there, wouldn't this make an incredible film? Well, Ted and David commissioned Adelaide writer Trevor Farrant to write the piece and they came up with a pitch that would have the Hollywood uh, executives salivating over this new work. There would be five songs uh, which they would retain of the Gilbert and Sullivan uh, score because it was in public domain, which was incredibly handy. But uh, the rest of the original score was written by uh, Terry Britton. 20th Century Fox would come on board as distributors and gave Ted and David a huge chunk of money to get things rolling. Well, I would do a successful audition and got cast as the role of Kate, one of Mabel's sisters who got to do a lot of frolicking around in the sand and uh, whatever we were doing there on the beach uh, and play with the policemen. My goodness, I was over the moon. I was especially excited when I found out that the leading roles were going to be played by Christopher Atkins, who I was had a mad crush on after I saw him in The Blue Lagoon with Brooke Shields, and Emmy Award winning uh, Christy McNichol, who I'd also seen in uh, the series Family. The Major General would be played by darling Bill Kerr. Uh, the role of Ruth would be played by uh, Maggie Kirkpatrick. Uh, who I used to love seeing. She was the freak in The Prisoner. My dear friend Gary MacDonald uh, would end up playing uh, the police sergeant inspector. And the role of the Pirate King would be played by the producer himself because he saw no other person right for that role but himself. Um, yes, and he was very suave and sophisticated. Ted Hamilton, and uh, we used to call him, uh, nickname for him was to Top Dollar Ted. One of Australia's finest movie directors, uh, Richard Franklin, was signed on to direct the film. He had directed movies such as Patrick and Road Games, which just happened to be Quentin Tarantino's favourite Australian film. The very successful uh, songwriter Terry Britton was brought on board to write the contemporary uh, element of the, the music in the, in the movie. I mean, Terry had written songs that had been covered by Michael Jackson, Sir, Sir Cliff Richard, Olivia Newton-John and Tina Turner, to name a few. My dear friend and uh, twin, I'm talking about David Atkins, uh, would be brought on uh, as choreographer and of course we remain dear friends to this day. The whole company was just just so amazing and uh, I was really excited uh, for my very first film. Well, we begin rehearsals in Fitzroy in Victoria and Richard was coming up with all these great ideas. He, he wanted to film the, the movie in Technicolor to give it that old kind of Hollywood feel. You know, we were so excited about the, you know, what he was bringing to the table. But uh, I think uh, some of the powers that be uh, disagreed with this and uh, I think it was um, an expense thing, a money thing. And within about a week, um, Richard disappeared. It was obviously something to do with creative differences, but he was, he was gone. Well, Richard Franklin would go on to direct Psycho 2, which was an absolute smash at the box office. Just on reflection, one can only wonder, you know, what he would have done uh, in his hands with, with the pirate movie. Meanwhile, back in uh, the rehearsal space in uh, Fitzroy, we would be rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing the same numbers over and over and over again. Uh, David, I, I just remember I was like pulling his hair out because we couldn't move on because we didn't have a director, but uh, I still remember some of those routines. 
one of my favourite songs, and I still remember climbing over Rocky Mountain, um, was uh, the sister song. Uh, and uh, here it is for you now. See if you can spot your ruder. She's a disgrace to the noble name of Stanley. Just look at her. I wouldn't wear a dress like that to bed. I think that's the whole idea. Wash your mouth out. What is she looking for? Love? Huh. Well, she'll have a long wait. She's the youngest. And by noble custom, the eldest must marry first. Which makes me first. Me second. And me third. Geez, we'll all be 50. Finally, we'd get to meet our new director, Ken Anakin, who had directed movies such as The Battle of the Bulge, The Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines, uh, Disney's uh, Swiss Family Robinson, and, and the pirate movie was going to be his 47th movie. Well, the original idea of making the piece contemporary uh, with, with new pop songs and hip humour and to make it very today uh, was uh, pretty much scrapped. Um, Ken was in his 80s and he wanted a much more traditional pirate movie. He was a little bit out of touch with what the young audiences wanted, I think. We spent lots of time um, filming um, the girls frolicking. We would frolic everywhere. We would frolic in our uh, little scanties uh, at, at Werribee House and uh, we did a lot of frolicking on the beach. Yes, there was a lot of frolicking. We shot a whole underwater, very groovy kind of jazzy ballet to um, uh, the very challenging pumping and blowing. Uh, which we didn't find out until later on uh, we would be replaced by animated characters. Well, let me explain the plot of the film. Mabel, who was Christy, an introverted student from the US, goes on exchange in Australia. She attends a local pirate festival featuring Yoronda in the highest cut swimsuit of all time and high heels, as you would. A curly-haired instructor and fellow American, Christopher, invites her for a ride on his boat. Mabel is duped by her exchange family sisters, Edith, Isabel and Kate, of course, truly, and she misses the boat. So she rents a small sail boat to chase him. A sudden storm throws her overboard and she washes up on the beach. She dreams of an adventure that takes place a century before, where the instructor is now Frederick, a young apprentice of the Pirates of Penzance. We become prim and proper sisters, and our father is the Major General. Mabel and Frederick fall in love and propose marriage. The Pirate King orders their execution, and there's several camp numbers. Camp! And before you know it, Mabel demands a happy ending, <laughs> which where each of the sisters are quickly paired with a pirate, and we all sing and dance and frolic in glee. Mabel awakens 
and realizing it's all a dream, but Frederick arrive and sweeps her off her feet. Oh my goodness, some plot, huh? Well, as you can imagine, I have quite a few uh, funny stories. One of my favorites was that um, none of us girls in uh, the sisters were, were ever allowed to wear any makeup on set at all. I'm talking no mascara, no lip gloss, no nothing. Christy, of course, would have the false eyelashes and, and all the makeup done, you know, in makeup for two hours, but we were um, banned from having anything. and. I remember uh, one day my buddy Linda Nagel and I snuck in some mascara and eyeliner. Um, yeah, only to be sprung and thrown off set immediately to remove it. Speaking of my buddy Linda, um, another story comes to mind. Uh, we were sharing um, a motel in um, Port Campbell where we were, we were shooting and uh, all the girls and the, the crew, we'd, we'd had a really big night the night before. We woke up and usually got the, the, the shooting schedule under the door and it wasn't there this day. And I remember hopping uh, out of the shower, panicking. I grabbed Linda's robe, her silk robe, ran down the street of Port Campbell, only to find out after I'd been running for about a kilometre that the complete backside of the uh, dressing gown was ripped open and everyone in Port Campbell the crew and the cast had seen my backside. Another memory was with Ted Hamilton. Yeah, Ted was quite the, you know, the stud. And I remember we were down uh, filming one evening, Polly Woodside, and he was humming a bit of pumping and bowing. And uh, I remember him clearly saying to me, uh, Rhonda, one night with me, I'll turn you from a little girl into a woman. Well, um, Needless to say, I stayed a uh, little girl a lot longer. Um, yeah, no go, Ted. Speaking of top dollar Ted, I remember, uh, you know, he used to fancy himself a bit. You know, he was very handsome, but uh, he wanted the girls to know it too. And I remember he'd got out of his caravan and his silver fox hair and his satin shirt, you know, for the Pirate King. And he thought he looked Fabulous, and I remember he was carrying a cup of tea, and uh, he, he came out to kind of parade. And uh, next thing, he, he tripped over a little stone, and um, the whole cup of tea went over his complete hair and down his satin shirt. Gosh, we laughed. We laughed until we cried. Another day when we were on set at Werribee Mansion, filming was held up because of the the weather. Uh, we all got a bit bored. I mean, there's only so much you can do, and. Uh, I remember um, only recently getting my driver's license and spying um, the company bus. And I don't know how I did it, but I managed to get Christy and the girls on the bus. We did a little bit of a tour around Werribee. Oh, gosh, we, we had fun. And, and, we, and guess what? We got away with it. One of the most difficult aspects for the guys uh, playing the pirates was uh, the swinging on the ropes, you know, across the bow of the ship. I remember they were advised uh, to urinate on their hands to make them tougher, um, all very well, but you know, they, of course, then they, they didn't wash their hands. And then we used to have to do these big numbers with them, um, big dance numbers, which was really gross. Uh, and I don't know, I, I think David Atkins and Ken, um, the director, must have felt sorry for me because, um, or I had the, the stinkiest guy, but because by the end, we, when we got to the big number, the happy ending, uh, I would, uh, my new partner would be uh, none other than my dear friend, Gary McDonald, which was gorgeous. And he wasn't a pirate and he smelt lovely and uh, we would get to do um, the happy ending yes it was a happy ending uh, song with him here it is now
When the going's rough and you've had enough Leave your troubles and your woes Turn the other cheek and forget your grief Make a friend out of your foe oh. Give me a happy ending Every time We'll kiss and make up With a budget of more than $8 million in its day, the pirate movie would be Australia's most expensive movie ever. The film would open to scathing reviews and uh, we would win a plethora of awards for for the wrong reasons. The, the Golden Raspberry Awards at that. The worst director, the worst music score, the worst song, uh, you know, we, which was our big number, pumping and blowing. It was also nominated for the worst picture, worst screenplay, worst actor, Christopher Atkins, worst actress, Christy McNichol, worst supporting actor, pop dollar, Ted Hamilton, and worst original song, Happy Ending. Mm. However, the film started gaining a cult status in the 80s and, and whether that was because it was on repeat so many times on HBO in America. And of course, we had the VHS uh, tapes here in Australia, which were a big winner. Now, uh, you know, 38 years later, people are still talking about the pirate movie. Uh, there must have been something special about it. Well, although, you know, the pirate movie wouldn't uh, turn out to be uh, an Oscar winner, what I did get from it was uh, lifelong friends. I'm talking about David Atkins, Gary McDonald, Linda Nagel, and, and, and many more. It's a ridiculously fun, silly, camp classic and uh, I recommend it highly if you're in ISO at the moment, if you want a bit of a giggle. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you did, I want you to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep more of Rhonda's Rewind coming. And if you like those stories and more, why don't you grab yourself a copy of my biography, Legs 11. Uh, you, it's available at rhondabirchmore.com, and I will sign one and send it out to you. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>